Okay, the Tavor 7, is this the ultimate battle rifle? The ultimate tactical 762 by 51? Or is it the ultimate modern sporting hunting rifle? Or could it be both? Now, a lot of you are like me, and we just like something different. Something other than an AR or an AK platform. This is the IWI Tavor 7, and I have been waiting to get my hands on this for a long time. Let's check it out. Nice. Now, I know some of you might think I'm crazy to say this, but the Tavor 7 really could be the perfect ultimate hunting rifle. I know that sounds, that sounds crazy, but think about its design. Short, compact, easy to fire, more than adequate accuracy, especially with some kind of optic, um, at least 200 yards in. Most of the guys I know hunting aren't going beyond 100 yards. That is an easy shot with this, easy. And I can't think of anything better for getting in and around the trees, up in a tree stand, whatever, rather than some great, big, long, traditional hunting rifle. I'm gonna argue this thing is ideal. I'm Drew. Welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. Make sure and hit that sub button if you like this video and want to see more reviews in the future. Way back in the day, the longer your gun, the better because it was more accurate. Today, the goal is to get the most with as small and light a package as possible while maintaining acceptable accuracy. Simple logic. Now, we've seen this with the AR platform. It has also led to the rise of the PCCs looking for the smallest, lightest platform that is still effective. Now, when it comes to power and distance, the 762 by 51 NATO or 308 rule supreme, in my opinion, as far as a standard issue military caliber. Now, the U.S. made an attempt to make a standard issue rifle for the Army with the M14 in 1959 using the 762 by 51. Now, due to its weight, size, and difficulty controlling, it was re quickly replaced with the M16. Now, many preferred to keep the M14 due to its firepower. As the M16 and AR platform continued to shrink in size and weight, the 7.62x51 was largely left behind until IWI came out with their Galil Ace and the Tavor 7 in the bullpup style. Now, IWI already had tested the Tavor SAR in the 5.56 and had huge success. Question is, can you take the 7.62x51 NATO and do the same and have it work as good or better than the Tavor SAR? Let's find out. Now, I always like to do a quick specs and tech to see what we're looking at before diving into the review. I will say most things look good on paper. The only real question is how do they group on paper and actually function? And most important, how do they feel? Feel is everything when it comes to a firearm. Okay, let's just take a quick look over the gun and actually see what it all has to offer. Now they made some great improvements over the SAR, except they forgot to include the folding iron sights, which is something that I really liked on my SAR. Before I get too far in, I just want to cover some of the, the things that this comes with. It, it is a huge improvement over the first Tavor. We've got, it, this thing is totally ambidextrous. We can do ejection port, safety, mag release, everything from both sides. So I love the mag release on this. It's right here. I got short hands. I can easily hit it with my finger. It kicks out and I can do that on either side. Same with the safety. I love having safety on both sides. It's the 45 degree. 
we've got the ejection port, and then the quick detach sling point. We've got one here, same exact on the opposite side, and then we also have for a clip, and then we've got one down here, both sides in the butt. We've got a Picatinny 1913 rail that goes all along the top. We've got a non-reciprocating bolt pullback and hold open. And I love this, it's kind of like the, the HK, and that was a feature that I really liked on HK. I can pull it back and hold it up here, and I can even switch that on pull sides. I mean, it, it is truly ambidextrous. Now, just like the original Tavor, the bolt release is back here. It's really convenient if you're standing or crouching or something, you just drop your hand back here and hit that in a bump. I like that. That's a feature that they left exactly the same. So there's a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of upgrades on this. Now, I almost forgot under here, we have sort of a secret hidden rail. We can take this off and then we can put on a vertical grip. I really like having the vertical grip on this. It really changes the ergonomics. And because this is not a pistol, there's no ATF issues with this. As far as breakdown, it is super easy. We've got one pin here. We push out, this opens up, and we can pull the bolt carrier group out. Pin pops out, this comes open, and the BCG just comes right out the back. Now, as far as the trigger goes, it's better than the first Tavor SAR that I had. It's still not the best. It, it is definitely better than a lot of mil-spec triggers that I've shot. Um, I do feel if somebody comes out like Geisel or some of them with a match trigger or at least an adjustable, that would be nice. I feel like I could really, really shrink my groups down with a different trigger. Now, one of the things I almost forgot here that's really important with this is the adjustable gas block here. We can, we've got four different settings. You can just take a bullet and stick it in here and adjust it. We can go all the way from, you know, adverse. Basically, the gun is dirty and it's getting gummed up and you want as much recoil as you can. And we can go all the way over and turn it off. It's really nice if you're shooting a can. And even if you're not shooting a can, it's definitely a positive thing to have. Hey guys, if you like this video, help support Beyond Seclusion. Go to our webpage, use our links. You go to any of these places, Primary Arms, PSA, you know, any of them on there, and you go there and purchase anything, anything that you are going to buy, that helps support Beyond Seclusion as long as you use our links. YouTube demonetizes a lot of stuff these days. You know, you never know what's going to happen. So doing this helps support Beyond Seclusion. And then Amazon, if you go to our Amazon page through my link here, Anything, everything, literally buying toilet paper helps support Beyond Seclusion. Guys, I couldn't do it without your help. Thank you so much for your support. So not too long ago, I did a complete review of the Galil Aces. I did actually all three calibers, including the 762 by 51 That would probably be the closest comparison to this for, I guess, that small a package. Let's just take a quick look here at a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Now, when it comes to ammo if you want to use anything the cheapest steel cased hard primer the galil did outperform the tavor 7. i do have my can on here i did some of my initial uh, ammo tests and accuracy tests without the can so that you could see what it's going to perform like for you without a can i will say the muzzle brake that's on there is deafening loud it is really loud so i left off my can for you guys for the initial sight in and the ammo test 
and then I put the can on and I'm gonna keep the can on for everything else because this thing, you got a double ear protection. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so got it dialed in on the 100 after the 50. The first group here, that's that NATO ball ammo. Not real exciting. I did just clean the barrel. Then I go to the PPU, and for whatever reason, it was shooting really high. And then I come over here, and that is the Federal Hunting Round. And that's not bad. It seems to like the little heavier bullet. And then I come down here, and I was aiming here, and this is with a Federal full metal jacket and the groups up here and that's uh, okay acceptable later i came back and shot another group with the exact same ammo here and that's a lot better okay so here i went with my hornady hunting round yeah not too bit eh, maybe two mla then i had i had only three rounds left of my ppu match and again you know about an moa and then, I, and then I went to my federal match. And if we take out that flyer, we've got two, almost three touching, you know, probably sub MOA. I guess the bottom line, after I cleaned it and I was using my NATO spec mill surplus, some old stuff, not super exciting, but then came back and got this group at the end with it and that's really not too bad considering that ammo i would say that's definitely in the realms of acceptable okay so those groups were actually pretty decent you know i think uh, with the cold outside and coming out and the change in the temp and then right after the cleaning i think those initial groups uh, were kind of off once we got in the groove, got the barrel kind of warmed up a little bit, got it dirty again, those groups really shrunk down. And I got to say, I was really impressed with that last group with this ball ammo. I mean, this stuff is old, guys, is covered in dust. And that last group, you know, wasn't super far off of the, the group that I got with the Federal match with the uh, Sierra Match King. So... <laughs> What I want to do now is I want to have some fun. I know I'm not going to have any issue whatsoever hitting 200 and 300, but I want to go over there on top of the hill at 500 yards using this Nikon. It's just got a BDC, nothing expensive, nothing uh, super extravagant. And we're going to use this ball ammo and let's see how we can do at 500 yards. All right, now let's try four. Nice. Can we do it? Let's go five. Nice. Let's just do five again. <laughs> All right, so she's kind of a brute. What I want to do here at 500 yards I want to fire a shot, and I want to get the second shot off before we actually hit it. Here it hit the steel, anyway. Let's give it a go. I'll probably have to go back and listen to that with editing. I think we did it. Yeah, so there you go. I gotta say, from my initial sight ins and some of my initial ammo tests, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, 
kind of had some issues with a mount that I started with. So I was getting kind of nervous about the function, or at least I say the accuracy of this gun. It also didn't like hard primers. And then I discovered that it comes with the BCG or I guess the, the firing pin had quite a bit of grease on it. Once I got that sort of taken apart, cleaned up, put back together, then I was actually able to fire even some of the Tula. Still didn't really particularly like the Tula, but I had absolutely no issues with this really nasty military surplus with hard primers. So I'm super happy with the accuracy that I'm getting thus far. I think what I wanna do now to, to me, this setup isn't really designed to have a scope like this. It's not for long range precision shooting. I think I'm gonna either put a red dot on or a lower power scope, and then we're gonna have some fun at close quarters. But again, then I wanna stretch out and see if we can still hit 500 with like a red dot or the Mepro M21. All right, we're just gonna give it a go here at 400. Nice. Nice. I can see it move before we hear it. <laughs> I love it. You can't tell me that that is not a fun factor of 10. I love it. That's 400 yards, guys. Okay, we're going to try 500 yards up there with this cheap military ammo. Let's see if we can do it. The wind's picked up, unfortunately. Kind of coming from behind. There we got it. Nice. So anyway, guys, that's my take on the Tavor 7. It's been a long time coming. Overall, it is, it's fun. It's different. If you're looking for something different, you know, rather than the AR-10 or the AR-type platform, this thing is cool. It's short. We got a 16-inch barrel in an incredibly small package. It's not light. It is heavy, but it's just, it's just a cool gun, and it's fun to shoot, and the accuracy was definitely what I would consider acceptable for some maybe even better than acceptable you know no problem reaching out at 500 anyway guys hopefully you found this helpful be sure to like comment and sub till next time happy shooting and be safe